Hi, um, today I'll show you the basics of working with PFP models in the latest version of Blender, uh, Blender 2.75. So this Blender is a little bit different than the Blender you're perhaps used to working with, Blender 2.49b. And this is because it went through a, a total uh, recoding process and now some things work a little bit differently but um, it's generally um, been improved a lot so it's much nicer to work with the new one and so when you got this blender out of the box um, you can't just import bfp files yet but you have to install uh, the scripts but uh, this is really convenient because you have a built-in um, add-on installer here uh, so you go to File and User Preferences and go to the Add-ons tab here and select um, Install from File then you navigate to the desktop or wherever you saved your scripts and then you use the scripts you can get uh, from my Dropbox or Google Drive account so make sure you get the latest version and you get the branch that is um, for the new Blender version. So don't try to use the scripts for the old Blender on the new Blender, it won't work. So you select them and install from file and then you have to activate them here uh, with this by ticking this checkbox. And then you hit save user settings and you're ready to go. Uh, one more thing, um, you might be wondering why I've, why I've got this uh, empty scene here in startup. Um, you can simply uh, clean your scene and then hit uh, Control and U so um, it becomes the default scene so it appears when you start up Blender. Okay, so now we can import BFB models. I've Given them, um, given them this Zootycoon logo here, so they're um, easily identified. So let's import one now. Desktop. So let's take this Diplodocus. And there it is. Okay, so now we can turn on a texture display. Okay, and here we have the texture. So um, now that there are two layers here in this file. So first is uh, this layer. It contains only the model. And then there's this second layer here, layer number six, um, which contains the skeleton and all the capsule colliders. So this one uses uh, three capsules for collision. Okay, mm, so some models also have lot groups which would appear here in this layers, but usually um, only official models will have lot groups because designers are too lazy to make them. Okay, so um, let's change this one's um, material and texture. So here um, this used to look different in the, in the old Blender where it was um, um, a hori horizontal um, bar and now it's um, vertical. So um, this tab is the material and here you can see the material and you simply uh, hit the plus to, oh no you don't have to hit the plus, you simply uh, rename it. So let's call this one test and then it will uh, create a material at export that, um, that is called like this and it won't override any existing material so you can have both uh, the Diplodocus and your own animal. So um, now we want to change the texture so we go to the texture, texture tab over here and we have to load in a new image 
and you do so by hitting this um, file browser icon and then I'll just take this test uh, skin that I've made and you can see it's green now okay so you don't see it in the uh, 3d preview immediately so perhaps we just have to split the area make this one a UV image editor and change the skin for all faces and now it's green you don't really have to do that but it's nice um, if you can uh, see your skin on the model as well but uh, just for changing the skin on the model it wouldn't have been necessary you could have simply exported it uh, with this model um, okay we can just do that now so we'll export it uh, to BFB and call it test adult female enter export BFB okay so now we can open a new BFB um, a new blend file and we can import file we've just created and here it is and now it has the green texture we've assigned to the model now just for fun we can also import some animations so import BFB animation and let's import walk ahead and you see it, the model was posed and when you hit alt A um, it begins to move oh and here's an interesting bug um, this is because the bone is in a strange position so the scripts aren't really sure what to do with it this is um, a math issue so it has something like a polar coordinates something like that I'm not sure how it's called but um, a very slight calculation error will um, induce um, a huge problem so you see here this bones axis is upside down and we can easily fix that by um, selecting the bone and hitting uh, control N and then uh, recalculate roll and global plus Z axis and then the animation should work if imported new so let's import it new walk ahead and it works uh, so sometimes you will have to do that I've only gotten it with this Diplodocus model it's somehow um, uh, plagued with this bug um, but yeah well I thought it was simply um, interesting to include that because I was uh, a bit confused at first when I got this one too but it seems like there's no way around it because it simply comes from the inherent uh, math that's um, underneath the uh, importer script okay so now you see you can simply animate it too and if you want to make some changes to the animation you can select the bones and go into pose mode and uh, switch to um, the animation screen and here you have the dope sheet editor using the pause one key or home key you can see all keys but you'll usually want to use the action editor instead of the dope sheet editor so you pick that one and then you can select the different actions here so you can quickly go to side view okay so if you want to change something in the animation you could uh, simply rotate it or do something to it and then uh, hit I for a manual keyframe insertion and then you can select what kind of keyframe you want to insert 
so uh, usually you'll pick available and then when you scroll across oh, there it was so um, and another option is that you turn on um, automatic keyframe insertion here uh, by hitting this red circle and um, use available and what else yeah okay so now if you post something you don't have to uh, insert keys anymore because Blender will do that automatically for you. So you see it keeps them. Now here this is um, difficult to edit because there's a lot of old keys inside that animation and uh, you see it's not easy to add those much keys so you would clean it up and then you can smoothen it out a little but in general or in general when you want to edit animations I recommend that you use the templates at least um, that I give out for my animals because then you can make use of constraints so the legs will will stay in place if you move some bone here and it's much easier to work with and to change the animations because uh, these animations that you uh, see in the in the files that are uh, finalized for Zootacoon are the baked versions and those only continue the baked animations of course without constraints so these are not really useful to edit but I just wanted you to show I wanted to show you the general idea that you could do so it's possible but it's not recommended like that and just for the sake of completeness uh, you can also export those animation files of course and select a folder and then it will export into this folder and that's pretty much it basic workflow well we can also of course uh, change the model perhaps turn on um, yeah turn on um, proportional fall off this is a nice tool perhaps some of you know it it allows you to quickly change the model um, just by scrolling uh, the fall off size you can add many changes um, in a short time and it gets uh, a smooth look or you can also another useful uh, shortcut is alt plus s so then you can make something fatter oh no that didn't work oh, they changed it i think Oh, well, it's not the same anymore. Used to be, I think. Ah, no, here it is. It also depends on the type of cursor you use. So this one can use can be used to make it fatter because it uh, it scales the model across the normals. Doesn't really work well here because the normals um, are messed up by the by the spines here. It works well on things like legs, something like that. So it's always useful to know the shortcuts that Blender has because there's plenty in this. A lot of really use useful functions that can make your life much easier and save you a lot of time. Okay, so that's basically uh, what I wanted to cover. Is it, It's really just the basic workflow of edi editing, importing models and animations. But um, I hope it was easy enough this time. Yeah, so 
that do to um, explain the basic functionality of the scripts. Okay, see you next time.